Contenders. I'm your host, Peg and Young. Well, do you check your email every day? Well, a lot of us do, and it feels pretty bad when you open your mailbox and all you have is spam mail. It makes you think about the value of snail mail, and you might want to think about sending somebody a letter with a stamp on it the next time you want to share news. Let's welcome today's contenders onto the stage. <laughs> Joining us, we have the Kunyang team, Son Soo-min and Dan Leonard. Thank, uh, thank you for joining us, and tell us a bit about yourselves. Well, first, thank you very much for having us. Uh, I've been living in Korea for the last year and a half. I teach in children's English school in Incheon, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to going to Jeju-do. Ah, <laughs> and? Hello, my name is Soo-min Son. Uh, it was my dream to be on this show, and dream came true no matter oh. what the result is. Thank you for having us. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Again, kunyang means uh, just because in Korean. And is that why you joined us today? It certainly is. And also to get to Jeju Island, right? <laughs> Good luck to you today. <laughs> now going against the kunyang team, we have the Unimas team, George Shoudens and Andy Kurtz. I hope I got that right. Yes, uh, yeah. Unimas, of course, is short for your university. Yeah, it's the University of Maastricht. It's in the uh, mm -hmm. south of Netherlands, where the European Treaty has been signed. And uh, we're exchange students at Sungshil University here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've never been to Asia before, and uh, so it would be a great opportunity for us to go from here to other places like Japan and Jeju. Wow, well, good luck to you. Good luck to all of you today. And now let's begin the quiz. First section, we will be giving you uh, 10 multiple choice questions, five seconds to answer per question. And if you get a certain question wrong, we'll have to stop and give you the sum of points up to that point. If you get all of them right, we get to give you 50 bonus points. Hopefully, you both teams will get 50 bonus points today. If you're not sure about a certain question along the way, you can call out chance and we'll take away two of the incorrect choices. Uh, Kunyang, if you want, you can choose among questions that's Q, U, I, and Z. Go with Q. Q. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with Q. Question number one. Of the following, how many wishes does the genie of the lamp grant in Aladdin? One, one, two, three, three, seven, four, ten. Two, three wishes. And we move on to two. Of the following, which will make food taste hot when applied? One ketchup, two mayonnaise, three mustard, four butter. Number three, mustard. We're kind of beginning easy, right? Are you ready for the next question? I hope so. <laughs> and we move on to three. Of the following, how many lives is a cat said to have? One, three, two, nine, three, twelve, four, one hundred. Number two, nine lives. And we go to question four. Of the following, which is not a movie James Dean appeared in? One giant, two, splendored in the grass, and three, rebel without a cause, and four, east of Eden. Number two. You still have not used chance, and we go to five. Of the following, which is the largest group of animals? One, mollusks. Two, mammals. Three, reptiles. Four, insects. Insect. Number four, insects. You seem to be on pretty sure footing. Um, how do you feel about getting to 10 and getting the 50 bonus points? We'll see. <laughs> okay, we get to question six. Of the following, a certain deep blue pigment is usually called which blue? One Chinese, two Russian, three Prussian, four Mexican. Go chance. Go chance. Okay, we'll take away two of the incorrect choices. And please make your final selection, Kunyang team. Okay. Number three, Prussian. <laughs> I 
paper, rock, scissors, it looked like you tied, right? Would yes. you let your partner take the answer anyway? <laughs> OK, good choice. And we move to question seven. Of the following, which item was not invented or first developed in China? One hourglass, two chopsticks, three silk, four movable type. Answer, please, Kunyang team. Number one, hourglass. Very good. <laughs> and movable type was originated in China. And we go to question eight. Of the following, which country is not associated with Lake Victoria? One, Uganda. Two, Zambia. Three, Kenya. Four, Tanzania. Number two, Zambia. <laughs> Did you have any idea? I had no wild guess. <laughs> Very good guess, and we go to question nine. Of the following, which is the most abundant element in seawater? One, oxygen, two, chlorine, three, magnesium, and four, sodium. I don't think so. Final answer? Number one, oxygen. And you're just one correct answer away from getting the 50 bonus points. How do you feel? We'll see. <laughs> okay, and we go to question 10. Of the following, V for victory became a popular symbol in what war? One, American Civil War. Two, World War I. Three, World War II. Four, Korean War. Number two, World War I. So close. Well, you did a great job anyway. The correct answer was World War II. That is when we adopted the V for victory sign. You end the section with a great 90 points. Congratulations. You. Unimas, you are left with U, I, or Z. Which would you like? Uh, we take the U for Unimas. OK, U for Unimas. <laughs> Question number one. Of the following, which symbol is applied to a question? One, two, three, four. Number three, the question mark. <laughs> <laughs> and we go to question two. Of the following, who is Hansel's younger sister in Grimm's fairy tale? One, Cinderella. Two, Gretel. Three, Dorothy. Four, Rapunzel. That's two, Gretel. And we go to question three. Of the following, which month is named for Julius Caesar? One January, two June, three July, four September. Number three, July. And we go to question four. Of the following, which two animals symbolize the flow of the stock market? One rabbit hare, two horse deer, three bull bear, four lion fox. That's three, bull and bear. And how are you finding the question so far? Very good. <laughs> Very easy, right? We haven't used chance yet, and we go to question five. Of the following, which would be an example of a family? One, dyad. Two, secondary group. Three, culture. Four, primary group. A uh, chance, please. OK, we'll take away two of the incorrect choices. And Unimas, final selection, please. <laughs> That's four, primary group. Very good. Good use of chance, and we go to question six. Of the following, which is the next largest country in Europe after Russia? One, Ukraine. Two, Lithuania. Three, Kazakhstan. And four, Turkmenistan. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Number three, Kazakhstan. Pretty tough. 
some Ukraine. question, but yeah. Ukraine actually is the second largest. You end the section with 50 points, and that puts Kunyang into the lead with 90 points. Congratulations. <laughs> Now, we have a great many questions left, so you have a chance to make that up, Unimas. Now, this is a section where we get to see uh, how well you partners work together. And of course, we give you 20 words in a pre-chosen category, 100 seconds to go through the entire list. And of course, you should not use uh, words or phrases that we give you on the board unless they are in parentheses. And Kunyang, if you're ready, please take your position next to me. And now, Kunyang, you chose nutrition and digestion. Well, yes, well, my mother is actually a registered dietitian. and I'm so obsessed to read health. Ah, this we're all into health, aren't we? Are you ready? Yes. Go. OK, it's in your mouth. Uh, tooth. More than one. Think. Teeth. No, well, yes. Uh, coenzymes. A, B, D. Vitamin. Very good. H2O. Water. Good. Spit. Saliva. It's the unit of food energy. Starts with the C. Calorie. Good. Uh, starches and sugars are? Uh, carbohydrate. Uh, it's between the stomach and the rectum. Colon. Start uh, no, starts with an I. Uh, intestine. Small and large, good. Uh, it's undigestible part of food. Fiber. Uh, it's not a vitamin. Starts with an M. Iron, phosphorus, zinc. It starts with an M. Mineral. Uh, it's a kind of fat that comes in animal fats, uh, at least a hard to our arteries. Cholesterol. Uh, another name for the large intestine. Colon. Uh, the simplest sugar. The simplest sugar. It starts with a G. Pest. Uh, okay. uh, it starts with a C. It's in milk. It Lactose. No, uh, it starts with a C. It gives what? you strong bones and teeth. Calcium. Uh, it starts with a K. It processes uh, processes filth from the bloodstream. Kidney. Okay. Uh, it pass. Okay. It, um, it's a co. Vitamins are co. Coenzyme. Enzyme. Uh, proteins are made of. Starts with an A. Uh, I, uh, amino. Amino acid. Uh, it's when you throw up to lose weight. Start uh, bulimia. Uh, hypertension. <laughs> yeah, you did a great job of going through the list very quickly. You did a great job describing all of the words. Um, you passed, however, on saturated fat, which I'm sure she would have gotten if you had given her a chance, maybe. And uh, couldn't think of how to explain it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty tough, isn't it? And we have simple sugar, glucose. Great job, though. 250 points. Congratulations. <laughs> Now, Unimas, we're ready for you. <laughs> now, your chosen category was deserts, yes. and you said that you actually lived in one. Yeah, I lived uh, in Dubai for half a year, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, desert is a beautiful place and a uh, lot of nice things to see. Scary if you have to change a tire, you said? Definitely at 50 <laughs> degrees in the sun, <laughs> it's just not very nice. Mm -hmm. And are you ready? Yes. Go. Basic ingredient S. Sun. Yes. C. Animal. One hump. Two humps. Camel. Yes. S. The big one in the north. Sahara. Yes. O. Liverpool rock band. Oasis. Next. Nevada. The city. L. Las Vegas. Yes. Next. M. Austin Powers. Uh, Mojave. Yes. Next. Uh, skip. G. Mongolia. Gobi. Yes. Uh, M. Fata Morgana. Mirage. Yes. Uh, S. Basic ingredient is? Sand. Yes. And Sand D. Storm. Sand uh, D. At the beach. Sand dune. Yes. Uh, the A in UAE. Arab. Yeah. Arabs. Different form. Arabs. Arabian. Yes. C. Animal. Uh, plant. Cactus. Yes. M. Uh, it has a curse. It's the bandage pharaoh. The bandage pharaoh. Oh, skip. Skip. K, uh, also a big desert. Kalahari? Yes. Skip. Skip. <laughs> um, opposite of small, 
G. Big, large, other grand, words. G. Other words. Great. Yes. Great desert. Uh, uh, great is the first one, second one is uh, the basic ingredient. Great sand? Yes. Great sand? Uh, great other sand form of desert? Great sand is the same, but a different form of sand. Adjective. Next one. China, T. Flour. Well, it proved to be a pretty tough category when it get, got down to it because you had some names of deserts. Um, you almost got it Great Sandy of uh, Northwest Australia. And um, you almost got the mummy, right? <laughs> the bandages. <Yeah. laughs> the mummy was what we were going for. And you passed also on the great tale that begins in the desert, the little prince. However, you end the section with 170 points. Great job. Uh, but even still, Kunyang did a better job and is in the lead with 250 points. <laughs> now, this next section is where we see who will get to go on to the finals to uh, face the R&B team. Now, let's welcome Mr. Kim Jun Sung with the questions. It's a very tight game. I almost feel like it's, uh, we're battling for Europe, <laughs> but we're actually battling for Jeju. But you're still excited anyways, right? Yeah. But uh, it's been a very competitive game. And actually, I was kind of nervous coming out from the back because of you the, could feel the, the nervous feel tension, the pace right? and, the, and, and, the, uh, and the, yeah, the pace of the game. I mean, that's pretty much what gets you excited, which, which is what the viewers like to watch as well. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, let me get uh, to the next round. Um, the rules for this next round is that there's 15 uh, non-multiple choice questions. Each question is worth 30 points. The first team that buzzes in can answer. If the team gets the answer wrong, cannot answer the question, then the question will go over to the other team. And uh, you have five seconds to answer. And in the case that both teams are not able to answer the question, we will give you a spelling hit. And so let's begin with question number one. OK, question number one is about automobile. German car maker Volkswagen has announced the end of the road for this beloved car. This with yeah. its Beetle. And we go to question two. Okay, number two is about geography. The gates of the Three Gorges Dam began closing on June 1st, and since then the water level behind the dam has been gradually rising. The dam would produce hydroelectrical power, as well as control, uh, controlling the flooding of this river. What is this longest river? Kunyang. Yangtze River. The young team is increasing its lead, however, Unimas, don't give up. These questions are worth a lot of points, so you can make it up. We go to question three. Okay, number three is about material. Do you believe that Sammy Sosa accidentally picked up this kind of bat? This. Unimas. Cork? Corked bat? Unimas team, it's good to see you on the board, and we go to question four. Okay, number four is about a country. More than 1,000 people have clashed with police in this country in the first major protest against the Islamic regime for more than six months. They chanted, Unimas. Iran. And of course, we would have also taken the Islamic Republic of Iran, and we go to question five. Okay, number five is about weather. This rains have struck the southern tip of India and are forecasted to move inland. Unimas. Mushong. And these are the mount monsoon rains, and we go to question six. <laughs> okay, number six is about invention. A postage stamp has been released in Italy to commemorate the Italian Antonio Meucci, who is now officially credited with the invention of this. Pinyang. Television? Mm. Unimas, it's your chance to answer and he'll finish the question. He patented his invention in 1871 but failed to find a commercial backer. Five years later, Alexander Graham Bell successfully patented this instrument. What is this? Unimas, five seconds. Unimas. The telephone. Yes. And I'd like to remind you, only share your answer with us after I've called out your team name. Okay, now we go to question seven. Okay, number seven is about city. 
Jovica Stanisic, the former head of Serbia's secret police under Slobodan Milosevic, has gone to Netherlands to face the war crime. Unimas. The Hank. And of course, you've been to the city? Yes. Is it beautiful? Yeah, it's yeah. a very nice city. Yeah. What very is good. distinctive about The Hague uh, versus other regions of the country? Uh, it's the city where the government resides, so it's very many beautiful old buildings, basically, old mm. governmental buildings. Ah, and have you been? Never. Never? And of course, <coughs> if you win seven times in a row, we could take you there. <laughs> and so we go to question eight. Okay, number eight is about a movement. The Matrix Reloaded has been banned in Egypt because of its violent content and because it tackles religious themes. The first Matrix movie was released in e Egypt but was criticized for promoting this. This is the movement establishing and developing a Jewish state. What is it? Kenyang. Zionism. And perhaps they're going against the, the name of the people's city, Zion, right, in the movie. And Yunumas, you're just 20 points behind the leader, Kunyang, 340. Very close game. We move on now to question number nine. Number nine is about a writer. <laughs> this writer's creation beat other fictional heroes. Kunyang. Ian Fleming. Yunumas, hmm. it's your chance to answer and he'll finish the question. Beat fictional heroes such as James Bond. In the poll of more than 1,900 women, in Britain, Mr. Darcy, the dashing hero of Pride and Prejudice, has topped a survey of fictional characters women would most like to go on a date with. Who is this woman author who wrote Pride and Prejudice? Unimas, five seconds. Kunyang. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Austen. <laughs> You obviously like Austin's books. Yeah, I oh. visited in English literature. Ah, really? And Would do you, you like remember to... Mr. Darcy? Do you remember Mr. Darcy? I like Darcy? him a lot. Would you go on a date with him? Pardon me? Would you go on a date with Darcy? Uh, no. I can't really? think so. <laughs> kind of, you know, twisted but attractive, no? Uh, Charismatic. Yeah. And we move on to question 10. Okay, number 10 is about organization. This organization has accused Tunisia of systematic human rights abuse and arbitrary arrests of opponents. Unimas. Amnesty International. Mm -hmm. And once again, there's just 20 points separating the two teams. Kunyang still remains in the lead with 370 points. And we go on with this very uh, close game, number yep. 11. It's too bad no one's going to go home. Um, I mean, somebody's going to go home, sorry. <laughs> I wish nobody would go home. All right. Uh, go. Number, number 11 is about a toy. Uh, several people have had their throats cut by strings that are either metallic or coated with abrasive materials in Pakistan. Police have now been instructed to treat such deaths as, uh, as murder cases. Flyers use metallic strings or coat them with glass shards to cut their opponent's string. What is this toy for flying in the wind? Kite. Kite. Kites. <laughs> Not a great way to go, don't you think? Pretty, pretty scary to actually be cut by. Have you seen those um, those movies where they use a wire to? Yeah, it's one of those. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And now, Kunyang, there's 50 points between you and Unimas. We'll see what happens with question number 12. Okay, number 12 is about business. India has warned the U.S. that if they limit the extent of this done in the uh, Indian IT sector, it will damage its domestic industry. This is the purchase by a company of labor or parts from a source outside. Kunyang. Outsourcing. And now we just have three questions left. We go to question 13. Okay, question number 13 is about an animal. The IFAW, International Fund for Animal Welfare, says conversation can include, uh, sorry, not conversation, conservation, <laughs> conservation can include regulating hunting of these animals. It says conditions today are very different from 1946 when the commission was established. Japan and Norway each continue to catch Kunyang? whales. Whales. And Kunyang, you did a great job, but once again, I'd like to remind you, only share your answer after I've called after your team name. Thank you very much. I've noticed that each time you answer, you, you say the answer about four or five times. 
you can answer I just once. want to make sure you can hear me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say that it'll save you the effort if you press the buzzer first before you answer, so. <laughs> I, I don't mean to get on your case, but it'll save you some energy, I'm sure. <laughs> All and right. we move on to question number 14. Uh, number 14 is about a currency. Okay, a few of the shoppers in Stoc uh, Stockholm had registered the British government's wait-and-see decision on the euro, but many were interested when told about it because they themselves will be voting on Swedish euro membership in September this year. What is the current currency of Sweden? Unimas. The krona. And now we are at question 15. Okay, number 15 is about a sport. Drivers of this turn the natural fear impulses of stress and danger into speed on the circuit. British driver Jensen Button's accident highlighted the ever-present dangers of the sport. Among single-seat automobile racing events, this is considered the most... Unimas. Formula One. Yes. Great job. It was a close game to the end. However, Kunyang, you win and move on to the finals. Congratulations. <laughs> It was a very close game. Mm -hmm. It was great having you on the show. Now, uh, share with us your views uh, with the viewers back home who are supporting you. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and we first of all, we would like to uh, greet our friends who are in the audience who accompanied us, mm -hmm. and also all the people from Songshil watching us. And uh, thank you for all the support. Thank you very much for joining us. It was great having you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Kunyang team, we will see you in the finals game, and we'll be right back after this. Final stage. Now let's welcome back the R&B team. <laughs> welcome back, R&B team. Shinyongbo and Reese Rajoki. It's good to have you back. This is your attempt at win number four in a row. I know you want to say hello to your friends, so go ahead. Yeah, I got some emails from my friends back in the states. So, hi Daniel, hi Chris. <laughs> And, and I'd like to say hello back to my family in New Zealand. Kia ora koutou. Oh, what did you say? Kia ora. It's hello in Māori. Kia ora. Mm, Are they actually ora. watching this show in New Zealand? Uh, they could be, yeah. They could it's be. The show in an awkward. And you've told them that you are right. coming out. Well, good luck to all of you today. Now let us get to the final section. <laughs> final section we give you five categories, five questions each, 10 to 50 points each, and you get to choose which question you'd like to have if you get the first question correct. If you get it incorrect, then we'll give an opportunity to your opponents to answer the question. We'll, uh, each team will get two chances to answer per question. And uh, what are today's categories, Shintok? Okay, today's categories as seen on your screen are Night Lives, Myth and Medicine, Women in Songs, Detective Stories, and Scent of Art. Mm-hmm. Fascinating categories, all of them. And now um, I will move on with question that I'd like to go with. Number one, night lives for 10 points. Throughout history, people have associated this animal with other more frightful creatures of the night. As such, it has endured centuries. Kunyang, bat. Mm -hmm. And bats are known for their echolocation uh, way of seeing things by sending out sonar and it is also the only mammal that can fly. Kunyang, it's good to see you on the board. R&B, let's see if you can buzz in quickly, get into the game and what would you like to have Kunyang? I'll go with Scent of Art for 30. Scent of Art for 30. 
30 points. Hello, my name is Park Yu Hyung at the Art Park. These days, uh, there are many exhibits that explain difficult works to you in a point of view that is understandable. So it is not hard at all to think that art is a part of life. I hope all of you today get to know art a little better as well. Let's start with questions. The 50th this was held on June 14th in Venice, Italy. It is characterized by a great deal of activity in the arts and a number of... R&B. Biennale. Yes. And Biennale means an international art exhibit held every two years. And the one in Venice originated in 1895, so it's been around for a while. RMB, it's good to see you on the board. And you are in the lead with this question. You get to choose. Uh, myth and medicine for 10 points, please. Myth and medicine for 10 points. Okay, for 10 points. In ancient medicine, some plant derivatives were used to alleviate pain, including alcohol, cannabis, mandrake, and opium. This was first isolated from opium by Friedrich Wilhelm, Wilhelm Sertner in 1805. But for long non-medical... Kunyang. Heroin? RMB, it's your chance to answer, and please finish the question. But prolonged non-medical use of this may lead to, uh, lead to addiction. Sertner named his discovery the bitter white crystalline alkaloid after the Greek god of dreams and sleep. Hypnos, the Greek god of sleep, was his father. What is his pain-relieving drug? RMB? Five seconds. RMB. Morphine. Yes. The Greek god of dreams and sleep is Morpheus. Also the guy in Matrix. Yeah. With the great uh, the oratory. Yeah, bare chested oratory. Mm -hmm. It was pretty awesome. Anyway, <laughs> RMB, you get to choose again. Uh, Myth and medicine for 20 points, please. Myth and medicine, 20 points. Okay, for 20 points. In anatomy, this is the first cervical vertebra that is at the top of the spinal column and which supports the skull. It has a name which it shares with one of the titans in Greek mythology. He supported the earth on his shoulders as a punishment in the same way this vertebrae supports the skull. Atlas. Atlas. <laughs> And Gerhardus Mercator used this also to name a collection of maps. Kunyang, with that question, you are catching up. 30 versus RMB's lead of 40 points. Kunyang, you get to choose the next question. Uh, night lives for 20. Night lives for 20 points. <clears throat> this animal ranges over Eurasia and especially over the steppes, plains, and deserts of Central Asia. It is widely used in medical research and is kept as a pet. If you've ever had this animal, you know that this furry creature is nocturnal. It has been known to keep its owners away while it runs on its squeaky exercise wheel. This is characterized, Kunyang? Hamster? By large, food-carrying sheet pouches, thick fur, and a short tail. And Kunyang, you have taken the lead and you get to choose. Stick with night lives for 30. Night lives for 30 points. We don't usually think marine habitats distinguish between night and day, but apparently this animal uh, is very aware of the difference. This is a nocturnal scavenger and lives near the bottom in shallow waters. The dorsal and pectoral fins are often edged with sharp spines in some cases, poisonous. The name is derived from the feelers or barbells that extend from each side of the upper jaw of the fish, suggesting whiskers. Kunyang? You? you? RMB, it's your chance to answer, and I'll finish the question. Whiskers. What is this fish? RMB, five seconds. RMB. Catfish? And R&B, you get to choose. Uh, night lives for 40 points, please. Night lives for 40 points. Desert animals are well adapted to life in their demanding environment. 
Many avoid the heat of day by venturing out only at night. This bird feeds at cooler morning and evening hours. This is much better at walking or running than flying. And, 그냥, Roadrunner. That is the common name for the two crested birds that are in the genus of the cuckoo family. It's also called the chaparral cock. And, of course, we know it from cartoons. Kunyang, you are once again in the lead, and you get to choose. Let's close it out for 50. Closing the category Night Lives for 50 points. Early, early Spanish settlers refer to this snake as matatoro, or bull killer. Found mainly in the Amazon, this arm bee. Anaconda? Mm -hmm. It is also known as a water boa, and is one of the longest, heaviest, and most powerful snakes in the world. Uh, probably originally referred to the reticulated python. And of course, it is from the Indian language, and it can grow up to six meters long. So it can be pretty frightening if it wants to six squeeze meters. you to death. Mm -hmm. About the size of the stage, huh? Mm -hmm. Six oh, meters. Not fun. <laughs> and R&B, you're in the lead. You get to choose. Uh, women in songs for 10 points, please. Women in songs for 10 points. Paul Anka gained an addition with ABC producer Don Costa and sang his ode to a former babysitter. Kunyang. Oh, Donna. Donna. Hmm. And R&B, it's your chance to answer. Costa liked it, recorded the 16-year-old and saw the single hit number one in 1957, eventually selling a reported 10 million copies worldwide. This song gained popularity once again 20 years later. It was because the song title was the same as the name of the former Princess of Wales who married uh, Prince Charles in 1981. She, of course, later divorced. What is this name? R&B, five seconds. R&B. Diana. Now you were pretty close, but Diana was the name we were going for. R&B, you get to choose. Women in songs for 20 points. Women in songs for 20 points. Simon and Garfunkel's 1968 album, <laughs> Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Didn't even let me get to the, the rest of the hint. Yes, it is a part of the record, Bookends, and it's a very literary album, and Mrs. Robinson was what we were going for, the role, uh, the role that Anne Bancroft played. Of course, she had an affair with uh, Dustin Hoffman, a very young Dustin Hoffman. Did you like the film? Oh, it's a great movie, one of my favorites. And do you like the song as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a pretty do. great song. And you get to choose. Okay, cool. yeah, stick with uh, Women in Songs for 30. Women in Songs for 30 points. Suzanne Vega was the first major figure Luca. <laughs> and that is the haunting first person account of child abuse. And it was very popular and it starts off, my name is Luca. You know. <laughs> I live on the second floor. Yes. Right. I heard it's about like child abuse or something like that, mm -hmm. right? It is about child abuse. Yeah. And Kunyang, did you like the song as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, great song, classic. He likes Mrs. Robinson, Luca. I like songs about women. Oh, really? <laughs> Me Great too, category yeah. for you. And so let's stick with Women in Songs for 40. Okay, Women in Songs for 40 points. In 1993, Antonio Romeo Monge and Rafael Ruiz released this song, or Monge, inspired by a dancer in Venezuela. Their popularity sparked a concert for the Pope. The dance was a staple in baseball parks as well as dance clubs, making this song the biggest single of 1996 R&B. Macarena? Yes. And it's from the name of a barrio in Seville, which got its name from the Virgin Mary. And the Spanish name and one of the hottest dance crazes of the 90s was the Macarena. And the, the duo, actually, that was behind this song was uh, Los Del Rio. Do you like the group? Yeah, I remember that. Did I, I pronounce his name right? I think so. I was very troubled by his name. It's Mange or Mongay. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, R&B, you get to choose. Yeah, 
Women in Songs for 50 points. Women in Songs for 50 points. This actress's nickname was the fifth Warner Brother. In 1932, she signed a seven-year deal with Warner Brothers. She became a star with The Man Who Played God. The only role she didn't get that she wanted was Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. In 1981, this song, titled after her name, spent nine weeks on top of the Billboard charts. This great actress wrote to thank Kim Carnes for making her a part of modern times R&B. Biddy Davis. Mm -hmm. And Kim Carnes sang a song titled Betty Davis Eyes. Very moving song. Beautiful eyes too. <laughs> R&B, you get to choose. Mm. Detective stories for 10 points. Detective stories for 10 points. Okay, for 10 points. Sherlock Holmes is one of the best known detectives and Baker Street is one of the best known addresses in London. Like Dr. Watson, Holmes' companion, the author, was a medical doctor. He started writing in his spare time and shaped his detective in the form of his instructor at Edinburgh University, Joseph Bell. He wrote Sherlock Holmes stories from 1887. Who is the creator of the detective, Sherlock Holmes? Kenyang? Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And Kenyang, you get to choose. 20 for de detective stories. 20 points, detective stories. Okay, for 20 points. The character's first name is never mentioned, and his wife, whom he speaks of often, is never seen. Most of the facts that are supposedly known about his private life are up in the air and sometimes contradictory. His trademarks are the raincoat, the slouch, the false exit. r &B. The shadow? Hmm. Kunyang, it's your chance to answer, and he'll finish the question. The false exit and questions to suspects about their shoes. This is a popular detective series from 1971 to 1978 featuring Peter Falk. What is the title of the series? Kunyang, five seconds. Young? Colombo? Oh. Yes. <laughs> you like the show? Uh, I never watched it. That was a guess. Oh. Wild guess. Great guess. And you get to choose. Uh, 30 points for the same category. Detective stories for 30 points. Okay, for 30 points. Who in the name of God is getting away with murder? This is a medieval detective story. And William of... Kunyang. Name of the Rose. It's Umberto Eco's famous tale. Uh, of course, if, there was a movie about this, a very good film and book. Did you read it? No. Did you see it? Nope. <laughs> Just a guess. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and Kunyang, you are fast. Catching up to R&B's lead, tw uh, 200 versus 220 points. Kunyang, you get to choose. Stick with detective stories. Detective stories for 40 points. Okay. Gilbert K. Chesterton wrote for many years for uh, newspapers, but he is remembered for his detective stories. His stories, in particular the first two collections, The Innocence of Blank and The Wisdom of Blank, contain some of the most ingenious detective puzzles ever devised. Chesterton's... Kunyang. Detective Gazette. R&B, it's your chance to answer and please finish the question. Chesterton's premises are often fantastic, and his detective is the Roman Catholic priest. Who is this detective? R&B, five seconds. We're looking for his name happens to be the name of a color. Five seconds. R&B. Black. <laughs> purple. Purple. Look what you've done. Like, you know, come on. Okay, all right. We'll end this here. We're looking for Father Brown. <laughs> You're close with black. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll choose the next one. We'll go with Scent of Art. Ten points. Merging global communication theories with an irrelevant flex of sensibility this person's electronic collages explore the junction of art, technology, and popular culture as he interwaves avant-garde figures, pop icons, and electronic processing. He is a seminal figure in video art. Kenyang. Peng Namjoon. 
<웃음> Very famous Korean video artist, musician, sculptor, and performance artist. And Kunyang, you are just 10 points behind R&B's lead. You get to choose. 20 point in the center of art. Center of art, 20 points. In 1850, this person began work on the gauge of hair, his masterpiece for the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris, inspired by Divine Comedy of Dante. Kunyang? Rodin. And some of the famous works from the Gates of Hell uh, were uh, The Kiss, Ugolino, Adam and Eve, and Thinker, which has that famous pose. Kunyang, you're in the lead now. 230 versus R&B's 220. You get 40, to choose. 40 points for art. Scent of art for 40 points. A British scientist stipulated in his will that this institution should function as an establishment for the increase and diffusion of knowledge. Its collections number more than 140 million items from masterpieces of modern sculpture and the world's oldest fossil to the original compass. It displays works by Henry Moore, Edgar Duga, and famous modern masters. It has headquarters in Washington, D.C. What is the... Kunyang. Smithsonian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it opened in 1846, and it is according to the will of James Smithson. And we have those great museums lining the, the mall in Washington, D.C. Have you been to the museums? Never. Oh. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Well, you know a lot about places and things you haven't seen or been. <laughs> Interesting. He's a master of secondhand information, I must <laughs> <Yes>. say. <Yeah. laughs> I to live vicariously. <laughs> and you get to choose. Uh, let's go with myth and medicine. OK. Something else I know Myth and about. medicine <laughs> for 30 points. Oh, that's me. OK, for 30 points. This mythological figure was a beautiful princess in Greek mythology. Her name is the basis for many medical terms. Eros, god of love, married her. She, a human was, who was later made immortal, represents a human soul, spirit, or mind. From Greek words, her name means soul. The medical term was first combined in the 16th century at a time when the human soul, spirit, or mind was seen as distinct from the body. Who is she? We are looking for a character from Greek mythology, and she was the wife of Eros, the god of love. You all know this character. Kunyang. Aphrodite. Now, the chance to answer is open to you, R&B. Five seconds. R&B. Athena. Um, what we are looking for is something along the lower rung of the myth mythological figures that we are, yes, we, we know well. Um, she, in Greek, her name means soul. And Kunyang? Psyche. Psyche? <laughs> Kunyang, you've taken the lead. 300 points versus RMB's 220, and you get to choose. 40 point with med myth and medicine. More of the same. Uh, myth and medicine, 40 points. Okay, 40 points. There are two answers to this question and you must give both of them. According to one myth, this god and goddess were in love with each other, but their difference was felt by some to parallel the essential difference between the sexes. Thus, the symbols which, which denote male and female in medicine are derived from the symbols from them. The symbols were first used by Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century. They were Kunyang. Mars and Venus. Mm -hmm. They were the god of war and the goddess of love. And I've never been to Mars or Venus, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, really. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to choose. 50, Close. yeah. Myth and medicine. Myth and medicine. Close that. Okay, myth and medicine for 50 points. Okay, wrapping up this section for 50 points. This never comes to a man who has to get up exactly at six o'clock. This troubles only those who can sleep any time. This term is derived from the- R&B. Insomnia? Yes. 
And it is the inability to fall asleep or remain asleep long enough to feel rested. And there was also an, a movie with Al Pacino and Robin Williams. Uh, and Al Pacino suffered from this. Uh, Robin Williams was a killer. And it was kind of noted for having Robin Williams play a bad guy. Mm. R&B, you get to choose. Scene of art for 50 points, please. Scent of art for 50 points. January 2003 discovered the self-portrait by this Baroque artist. He is already famous for his many self-portraits. He possessed a profound understanding of human nature. <laughs> 그냥. 고흐. 고개. 고개. R&B, it's your chance to answer and she'll finish the question. Was matched by a brilliant technique, not only in painting, but in drawing and etching. Perhaps no painter has ever equaled his chiaroscuro effects or his bold impasto. He ranks as one of the great painters in, his, in the history of Western art. Who is this Dutch artist? R&B, five seconds. R&B. Lembrandt. Yes. And one of his best no, known works is the Night Watch of the year 16 and 42. Now everything hangs on this last question. Kunya, you are on the lead with 340 points. RB, you have 320 points. Whoever gets this question, well, gets to go on. Uh, yep. Becomes the winner. We go with Detective Stories, 50 points. Okay, for 50 points. The first true detective stories were written in the 1840s by this person. He studied the French life and culture and was acquainted with methods of the French police. His knowledge made it possible to create Auguste Dupin, or Dupin, is it? Auguste Dupin, an amateur detective who assisted the French detective force by his deductive talents. He is considered the father of the detective story. Perhaps his best known tale is The Gold Bug. Who is this American writer? He wrote R&B. Thoreau? Kunyang, five seconds. Kunyang. Sir Isaac Newton? I'm going to give you an additional hint. This man is not traditionally best known for detective stories, the writer of that we are looking for. He is an American writer. R&B. Mark Twain. Kunyang, five seconds. I have given you all the chances that I'm allotted. Uh, we were looking for Edgar Allan Poe. And with that very tough question, we end this round. And Kunyang, you win first time. Congratulations. Various prizes are awaiting our winning contenders. Your first win will take you on a trip to Jeju Island. Your second win to Japan. Your third win will take you to China. And on your fourth win, you'll win a trip to Southeast Asia. On your fifth win, a trip to Hawaii. Your sixth win, a trip to the United States. And on your seventh win, you'll take the grand prize of a tour of Europe. We hope many of you join us. Ah, uh, R&B, well, you had a pretty tough game today, but you already have three wins under your belt. So share with us how you feel. We're pretty happy because I think we exceeded our expectations mm -hmm. realistically. Um, I'm very happy to go to plan to go to Hong Kong to the Rugby Sevens. You're what? You're playing in the Rugby Sevens? Hopefully, no. I'll be watching. Oh, <laughs> my goodness! How do you feel? Oh. In, in the the Bang Nam question, I think I had to that question. But anyway, it was very good experience for me, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, and congratulations on your three wins.
그냥 you've won. You We're have going to tickets. Jeju. You're going to Jeju. That's right. Are you happy with going to Jeju? Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You'll be back with our, <laughs> with our game next week, right? Yes. Okay. Well, congratulations. And with that, Kunyang is our one-time winner. We'll see what happens with them next week. Join us again. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please write us at our website. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye.